the next section that we're going to cover is 8-8, eight, eight, which is on the addition of halogens to alkenes. Okay, so first let's start with the generic reaction. Let's just take a totally generic alkene. And again, these uh, bonds are not meant to represent methyl groups. They're just representing carbons that are attached to, or that have anything attached to them, hydrogens, alkyl groups, whatever. And we are going to add a halide, like a Br2 or a Cl2 or something like that. And this reaction we do in a halogenated solvent like methylene dichloride, CH2, Cl2, or you could do it in carbon tetrachloride. Neither of those are good solvents. Uh, carbon tetrachloride is even worse. And it, what happens in this reaction is the pi electrons go after one of the halogens in the molecule breaks the bond, produces not a carbocation. We were going to look at the mechanism for this. Um, but it does produce a reaction, a reactive intermediate. The X minus that comes off of here ends up reacting with it. And the halogens end up going on to the molecule anti. So it's an anti-addition reaction, and the product of this reaction with the two halogens on side-by-side -side or adjacent carbons, that's called a vicinal dihalide. Vicinal is a word that just means side-by-side. -side. So vicinal dihalide means that you have halogens on side-by-side -side carbons. So let's do this reaction with an actual molecule and we'll look at the mechanism for it. And we are going to start with this alkene, this uh, trans alkene. And we're going to react it with a Br2 molecule. And the mechanism is the pi cloud attacking one of the bromines and breaking the bromine-bromine bond initially. And what we end up getting for this is this bromonium intermediate thing. It's, it's got a positive charge on the bromine. because it is a little bit electron deficient. And we've got, let's see, two lone pairs on the bromine. There's three lone pairs on the bromine. totally having brain malfunction. Let's move on and we'll come back to that. It will come to me. There's three lone pairs there. Five, six would be two. Two lone pairs. Oh, yeah. Because uh, what this set of electrons is used to make the first carbon bromine bond and then one of the lone pairs that's already on the bromine is used to make the second carbon bromine bond. And we get the bromine bromide ion. The bromide ion then attacks this intermediate and it can attack uh, at this carbon right here. 
hits down there and breaks the carb this carbon bromine bond moves those electrons up onto the bromine as a lone pair and we end up getting this product looks like that and we've got um, this is actually a wedge because it's coming out in front and this is a dash because it's going in the back and so that means we've got a wedge hydrogen right here and a dash hydrogen right here so in addition we also could have the bromide ion attack at the other carbon so let's draw a new intermediate so that we can show that step, that possibility. So here we're going to have bromide attacking at the other carbon and this carbon bromine bond breaking and that's going to produce That's the bromine that we added. That's the bromine that was already present. We've got our methyl group going back and our other, other methyl group coming front. Hydrogen in the back, hydrogen in the front. For this particular molecule, because of the symmetry, these two structures are actually the same. Uh, there isn't a difference in them. But that's just because the original alkene was totally, uh, had just had the right kind of symmetry to it. And it's not always going to be the case with all of the examples that we look at. In the next example that I'm going to show you, uh, you'll see that it's not always, it does not always produce just one product. The addition of the halogen will result in two. For this particular reaction, for this particular process, you're going to end up with, let's first draw our methyl groups in on the same side because they're cis. Hydrogen's in the back, bromine down, bromine up. Or, Two methyl groups in the front, other bromine up, other bromine down, hydrogens in the back. And if you take a look at the stereochemistry of these two products, even though kind of at a glance they look like they are the same, they are actually not. The stereochemistry on this carbon is one, two, three, this is an S. And this guy over here is also an S, so that's an SS molecule. This one is an R, and this one is also an R. So they are not the same thing. That's the end of this section. I don't think you need to write a summary for this little section, but you do want to give yourself a study question because it's a reaction that you need to know. Uh, you need to know the reagents to use to facilitate the reaction as well as the, the fact that it's a sin addition, uh, or excuse me, that it's an anti-addition and, and it produces a bis bisonal product. And I think we have time for one more section, section 8-9.